Assalamu alaikum, hallo en hartelijk welkom bij Pro. Ik is Abila Dixon, Mohammed. Mijn gast vandaag is Hanifa Gaibi. En dan gaan wij zijn jullie klim uit zijn kennisstory van Kwak. En zijn is die net een bakster of een persoon met kan Kwak niet. Maar zij is ook een civil engineer. Nou, je weet maar een paar weken geleden dat ik bij een groot vrouw gaan kijken wat die oudtijdse koeken nog maakt. En ik moet zeggen, die koek was baie, baie lekker. En die ander weet precies van wie ik praat. So die week het ek nog vir een jong dame kom kijken. En sy gaan vir my bruis chops maak. Ja, ek ken van bruis chops. Maar hierdie ene maak een groot verskil met haar bruis chops. <laughs> Salam alaikum, Ghanifa. Alaikum, salam met jou wede. Ghanifa. Chops is chops man en sy gooi net jou masalas in en wat ook al en wat ook al en daar kook in my skraan. Maar ek hoor nou jou bruis chops is totally met a different spices en goeders. Vandaag gaan vir ons kijkers, wat maak jou bruis chops nou so speciaal, miskien daar met jou speciereie? Okay, Auntie Abida, so it started off as, you know, me trying to experiment a bit with different curries. Okay. Um, but we're not really big into, you know, the whole curry thing. Okay. Uh, so I decided, okay, I'll take a little bit of spices and I will mix it with my chops and it actually came out quite nice. The family <laughs> enjoyed it. And um, that became then my statement dish. Whenever people come visit, they say, make us some of your chops, you know. So it's it's a mix between a curry, but it's it's not actually. It's more it's a, braise. a braised uh, okay. yeah. So what are you going to do? Okay, so today I've got, um, let me just quickly go through it. It's your salt. Yeah. And then I've got a tablespoon of tomato paste. And then one teaspoon garlic and ginger. I buy the, the store-bought ones, but mm -hmm. you can obviously make your own. Yeah. And then the crushed garlic also. It's one teaspoon of crushed garlic. And then here it's two teaspoons of turmeric. And then I always love to put jeera in all my food. Oh, okay. um, so this is, and I usually put more jeera in than anything else. So mm -hmm. here we've got about three teaspoons of jeera, the jeera powder. And then this is a curry powder. The one I'm using is the Paco roasted masala, but you get you can use any different mixed spice or a curry powder of your choice, and depending okay. on how spicy and how strong you want it. Mm -hmm. And then this is two teaspoons of barisha. Yes. And one teaspoon of chili powder, and then my other secret ingredient mm -hmm. is uh, a teaspoon of seafood masala. Okay. So you don't have to use seafood masala for seafood oil. Man, I was at your PO in a big stair, came on seafood masala, it was no chili seafood dish, and I had a soup of stair. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not really, it gives it a nice flavor. Oh, right. And I think the, the what I use as well is I put a teaspoon or two of vinegar in. So that kind of takes the strongness away, but it gives you that sourish. Sweet sour taste, so I put vinegar in. Now, can you see that? Yes, the dung, what a flower skull is, eh? And then, obviously, I've got two, uh, the two, the tomatoes. Yeah, grated tomatoes. Yeah. And then, the other secret ingredient is uh, ground almonds. So, I just took normal almonds and I made it fine in the blender. Almonds and like it, the nuts, nuts. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. goodness! So it comes nice and fine in the blender, so you don't even really, you won't know it's there, but when it's not there, you can taste the difference. Now, can you see, as I now praat van a eie recept, and praat sy nou rarig van a eie recept, ne? Yes, look, it's inspired by different okay. other recipes put mm. together, and then I just added my own things with, okay. and, and made it my own. Okay. Yeah. And then, and, now daar het ons moest nou klaar, as ek klaar die eie, moest nou yes. reis, okay. en... What did you look at before that? So what, what I like to do as well to add a bit of flavor is when I, I chop the onion mm -hmm. and when I braise it, I always put either green pepper or jalapeno pepper in here mm -hmm. just to give it a bit of flavor as well. Okay. And in this onions as well is a teaspoon of whole jira. Mm -hmm. So that also gives it a nice crunchiness. Sure. So when I braise the onions, I braise that jira ah, and yes, the okay. yeah. And uh, uh, the No, I use coconut oil. Um, so I braise my onions with coconut oil, it's, it's obviously a little bit healthier, and um, I, I very seldom use normal oil, oil. in my house, yeah. Okay. And then obviously in the end we, we, we flavor it and garnish it with a little bit of whole dania. Oh, yeah. So, let me start. So, for chops is I'm trained now? It's about a kilo. So you can use, I've got leg chops and your normal, normal chops here. Depending on your, what you prefer. But now, as we talk about a bit spicy, that is not very spicy, isn't it? Look, 
if you taste it and I'm like, yeah, we'll taste it later on. Yes, yes. It's got some spice, but I think the tomato and the vinegar and stuff kind of yeah. just draws, doesn't make it too spicy. So it's mm. got a nice flavor to it. Yeah. 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 So it's not your normal braise. So what can I eat that normal No, now I'm going to put the chops in, oh, yes, in the oh, and then I'll put okay. the spices in afterwards. Okay. So I'll, um, after my onions are braised, but I'm just going to warm it a bit now again. Mm. And then I'm going to put the tomato in, the, tomato, the crushed tomato and the tomato paste. Mm just to give it a bit of a sauce okay. and then I lay my chops in there to to brown a bit mm, mm -hmm. in there and then I'll add the spices after. Okay, alright. But then see that work here that you have right now but acai. Yes. I can know all the years of the brain acai. But acai comes from my man now the other day now. Yes, Anna. How come you guys can know how many people nowadays have but acai? For me personally, I, I yeah, I I find that the white one is not as potent as the brown vinegar. Okay. And can I say, I associate brown vinegar with uh, slap chips. <laughs> <laughs> so so in, my, you know, in, in my cake as well, when I make um, a red velvet cake, it also asks for vinegar. I prefer using the white vinegar. Just, okay. It's just my personal preference. So the chops, I've washed it and I've trimmed it off of all the, the excess fat. And I'm yeah. just laying it now at the bottom to just brown a bit. Mm. Um, so like I said, it's a mixture of your, your leg chops and your, your loin chops. But as I said, you can leg chops, you can eat so much steak gebruik. Yes, you can. And I think if you, and if you want to make it into a curry, mm. this thing can, you know, this, this, this recipe can convert into a curry that as well. Fine. So if you want to use your, your chopped pieces, your, your normal mutton pieces mm, mm. and you just add a little bit of more water mm. then you get a curry. Oh, okay, alright. And and what's the way I like my chops by uh, um, set? You can, the way we usually have it is I have it with a little bit of vegetables. So if you want to now be healthy, mm. we, I braise some vegetables on the side. Yes. Uh, my children like to have it with chips, with hot chips, wedges. And the other thing I also have it with is savory rice. Okay. So if you want to go the rice route, you can, I'm going to show later on as well how to make, how to okay. make savory rice. And um, if you're going with the curry option, then you can have it with roti, your naan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm going to make sure that I'm going to slap it. It's okay. The chops is in, the spice is in, and we are going to be able to use it when it is ready. Um, and then coconut oil for everything else. Don't be up 
probably use my fish oil in the children now. I chips off chips. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
Um, you know, spicy rice, you'll spice the rice with jam and stuff. That I'll put in afterwards when I mix the yeah, vegetables. Yeah, I'll put it in the fire. Oh, about two teaspoons, depending on how much rice you use. Um, so then my onions are just about brown. Yeah. Why not not salt in? Uh, not for this. So I threw salt in with my yeah. rice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm using two cups of rice, for example, that's what I have there, and I use two teaspoons of salt. Mm. So the number of teaspoons of salt versus is the same as the number of cups of rice. Mm. Okay? I always say the salt is what makes the food. Mm. You have to dip mm. the salt in your meat. Yeah. You also taste it. So, this is, I give it a few layers, just to make it a bit soft. Mm. And then here is my rice that's almost done. Um, so you just dry up all the water and, and then I'll throw this in here and then mix it and then I'll steam it but I'll show you now. Okay. Just letting this glaze a bit more. Alright, so see that you can see? Yeah, I can handle even now the rest. I can put by the rice and then it to be teleport special. I have to go and dance and dance. Blij en geschakel wanneer ons terugkomt, want ik weet wat gaan een diepere ons leven aan wanneer zij niet aan die kombuis is nie. Ek gaan vir jy sê, die klimmeid, sy ken nie net van kostmaakie, maar sy is welke beuze gaan my sê, sy is een civil engineer. Nou call me my stupid kind. Ek het geen kennis wat, dit is een civil engineer nie. Ek gaan wel vaal vraag. Gaan die vraag, wat is een civil engineer? Ok, ja, Bira, look, civil engineering in itself has different facets, you know, you can decide which section or which branch you want to go into. So, a civil engineer is somebody that will design your stormwater system, for example, the drain water and and the water recirculation, the roads that you drive on, for example, a, storm, a civil engineer would design those. Um, your structures, you're building a house, you need to get a civil engineer to sign off the structural integrity of the house. So the civil engineer becomes a structural engineer, so your base is civil engineering. Now, I went into traffic and transportation, but my base is civil engineering. So you can get a geotechnical specialist who deals with the soil. So when you build, does he build in your house, your foundation to test the soil and how the integrity of the soil and what needs to go into the foundation, you'll get a geotechnical engineer for that. Who, are the, who would have studied civil engineering? Mm -hmm. Then obviously, as I said, your water recirculation, your purification of the water is civil engineers, um, the designing of bridge structures. So there you get a structural engineer. And in my speciality, traffic and transportation, I specifically deal with the designing of the, the timing of traffic signals, yeah. um, your transport impact uh, studies, so when you're busy doing new building designs and um, you're going to develop a whole new property, you need to have a traffic impact assessment, so that's something a, um, a specialist would do, a traffic engineer. Um, sure, your, your speed arms, your traffic calming, everything to do. It's like it says civil, you know, it's for the people. <laughs> so we design things for the people. Well, I must say, what's the other thing I can say here? Can I understand the people? That voice now, net, ne? So as I say, it's no longer a man's world. That's all that I can say. Now, can you say, is that a bit of bio-work? It's, yes, but it's, it's fun. Mm. You know, you, I enjoy my job. I, I, I very seldom spend the whole day in the office. So I'll go to site, um, I'll be busy doing a, a meeting with the communities because I work for the city of Cape Town. Um, we get very involved with the, the schools, your communities, your, your developers and things like that. So it's exciting, it's, it's different, every day is different. Um, and I don't necessarily do the hard course. So you, if you are looking at a, a, a career in engineering, you know, you don't necessarily have to go and go deep, uh, dug in the ground or lay that pole, things like that. You can go into design, which is what I did. So I spent about 12 months on site as a resident engineer, but I specialize mostly in designing and, and doing reports. So you can do that. Okay. Now, the problem of the robots and all that type of computers. You know what I can my man for the era for straight. When you want to come with a robot, and the robot is too long or too short, dan sê ek, daar is iemand achter die skerm, waar die knop is druk om my robot lang te vat, of die knop is druk, is dit so? I think, I 
get that often in, in that way people, you know, when I say I work for the city of Cape Town and I, I deal with the traffic signals or the traffic lights and everybody says, oh, but that robot outside my house is not working. And I say, but you need to tell me, you know, we don't know these things. So uh, lots of the time, in, in especially in your busy intersections and when you have your main road and then you have your side roads, um, the, the, the traffic lights are intelligent, okay? So we put certain things in place where um, it can pick up vehicles. So it will detect when the side roads, for example, when vehicles are coming on the side road, it will then say, look, you know, there's a vehicle standing here. You now need to go red for your main road to give them green time. The other thing also is that different timing plans run for different times of the day. So for in your peak period, you want to give more green time to your main road. Oh, so that's okay. why sometimes if you go in the middle of the day, then you think, oh, but this traffic light changed quite quickly. But in the morning, I have to wait so long mm -hmm. because we're managing the traffic. So we're trying to try our best to, to manage the traffic and try to alleviate the congestion a bit. But there's just so many cars on the road. You know, mm -hmm. Cape Town is becoming very congested. Um, we're really trying our best, but we're trying to manage that with the traffic lights and, and optimization of our. I get as it's not a little bit here, but I'm very fan of the process. I'm going to try to make more bells to let work so that I can make more traffic bells. Yes, yes, that, that is one way of, of uh, you know, we call it uh, travel demand management. So a, a way of trying to relieve the congestion because what, what's happening is now is that people are going into the into the town or to places where they work at, with their vehicles because, you know, our public transport system, unfortunately, is just not going to cope with the demand. With the demand. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're having more vehicles on your road and people are with, sitting longer in traffic. So I think companies are nowadays, they are looking, even the city, for example, we're looking at other options of either flexi time or people coming in earlier and leaving earlier to to take less vehicles off the road during your normal peak time. Um, so we are exploring that and I think companies do, nowadays you can work from home, you can work off your phone, you can work off your tablet, you know, off your computer. You don't have to go into the office. Alles is makkelijk. Yeah. It's so easy these days. So. The last question for our conversation As you complaints complaint, how long do you have to answer to the person? It depends, um, and I think if you look on the on the traffic light itself, on the controller, there's a number that you dial. Um, it, it all depends on how efficient you, you are as the complainant, as the member of the public saying, look, I'm standing at this intersection, or that giving the number on the controller box, it will give us, it will make it easier for us to respond quicker. So it all depends on the information you give us, the location, what is your issue. So don't just say, uh, I'm standing too long and now the traffic is not moving or the light is not working or it's short time. You know, say it's, it's either flashing or it's only giving me three seconds and I can't get through. You know, like the more information you give us, the quicker we can respond because there's different departments that respond. Mm. So you're, you're obviously your flashing lights is something you must look for mm. immediately and that is we've got people on standby um, to respond to that as soon as possible. Mm. We also have in some of our major intersections, we have uh, UPS systems where the, if the power is out, then the traffic light might still work. Um, so we are looking at ways to, to improve our service. Okay. In 20 seconds, as a modern or a modest girl, what should I do for us, young man, here, your rat? Just be yourself. You know, don't try to be anybody else or try to fit into a box that, that you think now, oh, you know, I'm coming now and people expect me to be this way. Be yourself and they will appreciate that. Okay. Hanifa, say it to you, Hanifa, say it to you. Okay. And so I say, my guys, and naturally, Hanifa, can you be here? And you can now see, ne? Hanifa has a braised chops and a savory rice as well. But now we're going to prove who proved the Verschillende braised chops <laughs> met die spesserij. Ga nie van de wijl, ek gaan wel gaan proe hier nou aan jou braised chops. Gee gaf ons kijkers weer die spesserij wat jy gebruik. Oké. Okay. So, it's the, obviously the braised onion with your, your um, jalapeno pepper mm. and your teaspoon of whole jira. So you braise that and then I add the chops and the tomato, grated tomato with a little bit of tomato paste mm. as well. And then um, spices is the, the jira, barisha, uh, chili powder, curry powder, so roasted masala. And you, what's the verdict? <laughs> so it's got that spicy, but you know, it's not a curry. 
Yeah. Um, and then the, the where did I stop now? So it was your curry powder and then obviously the five moles or your one teaspoon of seafood masala. Mm. So you braise all that together with your chops and then <clears throat> after that when the, when the chops is almost done you then add your two tablespoons of crushed almonds and your one tablespoon of vinegar and what the coriander is last. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And after? And that's it. Nou kan jy nou sien, ek is seker jy het nou gehoor na die ingredients wat daar was. En dan het jy nou vir jy gewaas, ek het nou net so gesnu, ek het eerst gesikkel nie. So die chops is heel te mal sag. En sy smaak is te lekker. Ek gaan vir jy sê, die verskil wat ek vandag in hierdie bruis chops gesien het, is natuurlijk die witte sy en natuurlijk die fijne gemaakte almonds. Maar dit proos om maar baie lekker.